Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of an early Islamic Arab from southwestern Syria. Uh, let's get into the video. Here's what this individual is predicted to look like. My Nashakoto is predicting him to have brown color eyes, snob shaped nose and black hair. Uh, my eye shape predictor tool is predicting him to have a South Asian eye shape. However, uh, this is only using two S&Ps to make the prediction, so take that uh, with a grain of salt. And my hair shape predictor tool is predicting him to have kinky hair, but this is once again done with only one S&P. Uh, so this is a pretty low coverage file. And um, it's actually so low coverage that Snipper Free couldn't even classify his hair. According to Snipper Free, he's got white skin, brown eyes, and they could not give him a classification for hair color. Uh, YSEC could not give him a classification for eye color, so that's why they depicted him with sunglasses. He possibly has BH1 based on some genotypes in Oka2, but is predicted to have darker eye color based on other Oka2 genotypes. Um, he's got lighter eye color and lower likelihood of heterochromia according to his genotype in this variation of SLC20. 4 which you can see on the screen and he's actually got some other light coloring genotypes in tier tier 1 and irf4 however he does not have the european hunter gatherer blue eye and red hair and pale skin variants in the main irf4 variation and he also does not have the european uh, depigmentation alleles in slc 45a2 so that means he's got darker non-european skin as, along with other traits such as eye and hair color now we'll be taking a look at his GED match results, starting with Eurogene's K13, and here you can instantly see uh, this is not a uh, Levant, this is not a result that's typical for Levant. Uh, for the Levant, they'd mostly score East Mediterranean, there would also be more West Mediterranean and West Asian. This is looking like a Peninsular Arab result, and it's actually closest to Saudis, followed by Yemenite Jews, followed by Bedouins, very high distances, and the Oracle seems to, the Oracle is very interesting here. I think that the, the references on Eurogenes K13 are kind of broken because it should not look like this. Um, this is what he's scoring with MDLP K16. Once again, you can see the biggest components here is Near East, which I'm guessing is some kind of Natufian-like component. Plus, there's a little bit of Caucasian. There is 4% um, step, which is kind of nothing. Um, there is also no Sub-Saharan African in this individual. So this individual is very Southern. Once you can see, once again, you can see with the Oracle closest to Saudis, followed by Jews from Yemen, and actually getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Jewish plus Libya, which is kind of like Levantine plus Bedouin. So once again, very peninsular Arab result. Uh, with Eurogenes K13, K36, excuse me, this individual is mostly scoring Arabian, which is once again a component that peaks in peninsular Arabs. Um, there is a little bit of North African here. There is no uh, Sub-Saharan African in this result, once again. No Sub-Saharan African admixture. Uh, with Harappa World, you see 3.5% West African admixture here, but it's looking like a very Arab result once again. Uh, heavy, heaviest component is the Southwest Asian. Uh, there is 1% East African, uh, with the Oracle once again closest to Bedouins, followed by Saudis. And Bedouins are kind of the extreme, uh, genetic extremes, right? They're the most southern of the uh, peninsular Arabs. And with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Saudi plus North African. And we're arriving to Pond DNA LK10. Uh, what's interesting about this result is here he's actually scoring 2% Western Hunter Gatherer. And this is not like um, ancient, ancient Eurasia K6 because the, that, that component, that, that calculator is, is completely deranged. Here, the Western Hunter Gatherer component, if you're scoring it, that means you probably do have it. So this individual does have like 2% Western Hunter Gatherer component, which is kind of interesting to remark. And we see this with Pan DNA LK12 um, as well, 1.7% European Hunter Gatherer. So he does have the European Hunter Gatherer component somewhere down his lineage. There was a European hunter gatherer. Uh, and with the Oracle, he is getting modeled as a mixture of Saudi plus Tunisian Jew. Uh, basically, a mixture of Saudi plus some kind of Levant. But still very peninsular in the result. And with ancient Eurasia K6, this is actually the only calculator that shows any kind of affinity to populations of the Levant. Uh, with the Oracle, he is closest to Levant Bronze Age. Followed by that is Saudi, but still closest to Levant Bronze Age. And this is actually the only calculator where you see. Uh, that this individual is from the Levant, and he is from the Levant, he's from Syria, uh, he's from very close to Israel and Lebanon, closer to Lebanon than to like Mecca or other places in Saudi Arabia, so this individual, uh, I'm kind of a little bit surprised that he is so close to Arabs and peninsular, uh, peninsular Arabs um, and even Gulf Arabs rather than like people of the Levant. Now we'll be moving on to his predicted phenotype and traits with my genome analyzer tool, which you will find on my website. Um, now, he's not genotyped for most of these variations, it's a pretty low quality file, 
but we'll be taking a look at the variations he was genotyped for. So for example, let's start with this one. He's got GG here in ZRD2. Uh, and this is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia and, nic and nicotine dependence. Uh, I did some research on this before. Well, I do research on everything that I add to my website, obviously. And um, the GG genotype here actually decreases the number of D2 dopamine receptor sites a little bit. Uh, he's got CC here, once again DRD2, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to a slightly higher number of D2 dopamine receptor sites and better memory performance. Uh, so the alternative allele, I think, is the A here. I think A is the alternative allele, and that leads to a decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites and increased likelihood, likelihood of alcoholism, along with some other traits, which this individual does not have. This individual has got very typical, very stereotypical, normal human genotype in both of these variations. Um, for DRD3, he's got GG here, which is the typical genotype for most humans, and it leads to lower odds of autism. I actually, I don't know how does dopamine, what does dopamine have to do with autism? I did read that um, DRD3 has some links to autism, but I don't understand how this is, this works exactly. Like, what does dopamine have to do with autism? He's got TT here in 5-HTTLPR, and this is a typical genotype for most humans. Um, so this is a short form 5-HTTLPR. Most of you guys watching this video also have short form 5-HTTLPR, uh, which means you have some slight problems, some trouble. Uh, when it comes to uh, transporting serotonin. Now, some of us, like for example me, I have long form 5-HTTLPR. So these two mutations, I have both of them. Both these two mutations, I do have. Uh, and so for me, that would mean I have a lower risk of depression compared to uh, most people. But most people have short form, just like this individual, slightly higher risk of depression and problems with transporting serotonin. For empathy gene, OXTR, OXTR, he's got AA here, which means this individual has two variants for higher OXTR expression and increased empathy. All right, for diabetes, he's genotyped for the most important variation. Um, the, other, the other ones don't really matter all that much. The one you really want to look for is this one. And you see he has CC genotype here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Definitely does not have type 1 diabetes. This is actually um, the only variation that is the most important for type 1 diabetes. And I'm not going to say you can basically predict type 1 diabetes just by this one genotype alone. That would, uh, that would obviously be an incorrect statement. Like the success predict rate, prediction success ratio would probably be like 30%. But it is the most important, it is the single most important variation that contributes to type 1 diabetes. And he does not have it. He's got CC here, sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Uh, for Alzheimer's, TT here, which is a typical genotype for most humans and leads to average slightly increased risk of Alzheimer's. And CC here, which leads to increased risk of Alzheimer's. But, you know, these two don't, they don't really matter all that much. What you would really want to see, you want to see the genotypes for these two. These are the APOE genotypes. And as you can see, this file simply does not have these genotypes included. So we can't really make this judgment. Uh, for myopia, TT here, which leads to increased risk of myopia. Uh, for the miscellaneous section, nothing has been found. Nothing is in the file. For drug response, nothing is in the file. Let me scroll down. Can I scroll down? Can I, can I scroll down? Excuse me? Okay, I can. Uh, for albinism and atypical traits, CC here, which means not a carrier for albinism type 1B. So not an albino. Um, nothing <laughs> nothing else is determined. Yeah, I can't really, really even tell you that this is not an albino because if I had like, if all of them were determined, if all of them were in the file, then I could make the judgment. But probably not an albino uh, because let's be honest, al albinism is super rare. You don't really see it all that often. Um, well, that's pretty much all there is to this individual. That's all there is to this genome. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.